Okay, so for Project Saturday X14, we have three more that we have to do. Easiest one to get out right now is once we've processed it a, a file, move it to an archive folder. Okay, that's actually fairly simple. Let me show you. So coming back into our integration services project, I'm going to get rid of this script task that displayed the name. I don't need it. I just wanted to use it to verify what was going on in the package. And so I would use a file system task. And after I've loaded the text file, I need to come down here and I have a lot of choices of the operations the file system task can do. But the first thing I need to do is create a directory. So we want to create an archive directory for us to store the files in. So create the directory. And is this a variable? Yeah, you know, probably in the real world I would make the archive a variable. Now I'm actually not. I'm just going to make it the create folder. That is the usage type. And the folder will just simply be called C archive. And I say OK. And if the directory already exists, I do want it to just simply use that. I don't want it to create the directory and get an error message. So I say OK. So I'm going to go ahead and name this uh, Create Archive Folder. Okay. Now, does that move the file for me? No. I drag another file system task, and I'll name this Move Folder or sorry, move file to archive. And my operation on this one is not a copy file, but we want to move the file now. Okay. So I move my file and now where is the source file? Well, the source file is actually the file connection. So the source file, let me move this up to make sure you see this. Uh, the source file is our connection manager down here. Remember that we are using an expression and we're using the for each loop to assign the value of the file name and we're using the expression to put together the path to the files and the file name. So the source is that file that that connection manager is using at the moment. Now where is the destination? Well the destination is the archive. Do you want to overwrite it at the destination? I don't know, that's kind of your, uh, you'll have to figure out your own business rules as to whether you want to do that or how would you deal with it. Uh, you know, are they really the same files just because they have the same file name? You know, I mean, that's something that you'd have to uh, deal with. Okay, so I'm ready. Let's just go ahead and say okay. And so we move the file to the archives. <laughs> archive, sorry about that. You probably caught that. <laughs> I didn't. And so when we do that, we've satisfied now step five. Let's just make sure. Let's delete all of our rows. Uh, let's now run our package. You know, this is kind of like sort of a unit testing, if you will, unit testing individual uh, pieces. Let's see. Are there still files in the import data? That's where our source was. Nope, because they have all been moved to the archive. All right, we're, we're making progress on this. I'm going to move them back because we, we still have a little bit of testing and a little bit of work to go through. Let's just verify that it loaded them into the table, and it did, so let's get back to zero. Okay, uh, the final little piece here before we put together the icing on it, the final piece is our business rule that we never want to reprocess a file. Now, the easiest way that you can accomplish this is always moving it to an archive, right? Uh, but there are other techniques for tracking this information, and I'm going to show you one right here. What I've done for many, many years is create a table in SQL Server file process history or something to that effect. And so we would have something like just a generic... Uh, identity column primary key 
and then I would have file name and var car 128. And you know, the re in the real world, I'd probably make this a little more complex. So process date, and we'll default that to be get date so that we don't have to provide that from the front end. Um, in the real world, I'd probably put things like package name uh, or you know the object ID of the table that I'm working on. But for now, I'm going to keep it pretty simple. We're just going to call the uh, create our table. And so what I want to do is when I've loaded a file up, I want to audit that I loaded it up by writing a record to the file process history. Okay. Now let me ask you, I'm going to slow down here. Which of our glorious tasks would you use to audit a particular statement like this or a particular iteration through the for each loop? Well, if you said the execute SQL task, then you're right because we want to execute a SQL command once per iteration. So let's do this. Let's um, bring it over here. So we'll put this down here. And we could do this simultaneously. You know, we have a couple of different options. Uh, once we are successful, we want to both create the archive folder and execute the SQL task, right? So I come over here and I look into my learnitfirst.com connection. And I can just type in insert uh, file process history to the file name values question mark. Now, uh, this may look a little bit odd, and if it does, now it's time for you to go back to Chapter 5 and learn how to use the Execute SQL task with parameters, because that's what this question mark is. It's what we call a parameter mark, and we're going to say that this parameter is the first parameter in this statement. That means it's parameter 0. It's a zero-based index. This parameter, under the parameter mapping screen, I hate this screen, is going to be populated by the file name. So we're going to take the variable that the for each loop container processes and we're going to make this stored into the table. And it's an invar car and it needs to be zero right there for that to work. Okay. Uh, so let's just name this audit file name. Uh, let's just again run this, make sure that our auditing is working successfully. We get green. Uh, we can go see that everything was moved to the archive folder. Come back over here, put it back. This is the life of an SSIS developer, testing everything. Did it work? Yes. But now let's test that file process history table. And you can see now that we have audited those file names. Now, could we have included the folder name? Oh, sure. Absolutely. We would have just concatenated those two. I just chose to process the file name, just trying to show you how it works. You can extend these as examples as much as you want. So I'm going to now delete my file process history and the customer. Right, We're setting everything back to zero. Coming back over here, I, did I put those in? I did. 